the future of space exploration is about to get wild. That's because Jared Isaacman has officially become the new NASA administrator, the same man who wrote a highly detailed 62-page document known as Project Athena, a plan not only to overhaul NASA, but to map out a long-term path toward building a human civilization on Mars. And of course, at the heart of that vision, one name keeps coming up, SpaceX. Together, NASA and SpaceX could reshape the direction of space exploration and bring the dream of Mars closer than ever before. So, what exactly is Project Athena, and how is this plan supposed to unfold? Let's break it all down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Jared Isaacman, a young and highly successful entrepreneur with a deep passion for space, has flown aboard SpaceX's Dragon capsule twice, first on Inspiration4 in 2021, and then again on Polaris Dawn in 2024. After spending two missions in orbit, watching Earth drift by against the backdrop of deep space, he came away convinced of just how beautiful and almost surreal space really is. And that experience pushed him toward a much bigger dream, a bold, almost crazy vision, not unlike Elon Musk's, not just reaching Mars, but building a permanent outpost there, a self-sustaining ecosystem for humans on another world. From late 2024 into early 2025, Isaac Mann personally researched and wrote a document known as Project Athena. Originally over 100 pages, later refined to 62, it laid out a strategic plan to restructure NASA, put Mars exploration front and center, embrace nuclear propulsion, and accelerate mission timelines. The plan included bold moves like Project Olympus, designed to prepare for a long-term Mars presence with early uncrewed Starship missions, and an accelerate, fix, jars, delete philosophy to cut through bureaucracy, reorganize NASA centers, and partner more with private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Rocket Lab. The ultimate goal? To move faster, cut costs, and make NASA operate more like a business, all while keeping Mars in sight. Now, with Jared Isaacman officially confirmed as NASA Administrator, the question becomes clearer. How would the Athena plan actually work? First, Project Athena begins with a sweeping organizational overhaul designed to strip away bureaucracy and refocus NASA's resources on the Mars mission. The argument is that NASA has become fragmented across hundreds of programs, with large portions of its budget tied up in efforts that no longer align with future exploration goals. Athena calls for a full agency-wide reorganization within 180 days. That includes flattening management layers, eliminating redundant deputy and assistant roles, and pushing a mission-first culture built around urgency and personal accountability. One concrete example is Directive 2, organizational updates, which requires major centers like Johnson & Kennedy to submit consolidation proposals within 30 days. The goal is simple increase the number of doers, the people actually building and flying hardware, rather than administrators. This directly supports Mars by freeing up budget from non-essential programs, including a planned shift of resources away from SLS once Artemis II and the Third are completed, and redirecting that funding toward more advanced initiatives. Take SpaceX's Starship, for example, the largest and most capable launch vehicle ever built. Just imagine this. NASA currently spends $3 to $5 billion every year on SLS and Orion. Now, picture that entire budget being redirected to Starship instead. The scale of progress that could unlock would be absolutely staggering. Second, the heart of Athena lies in Directive 5, Invest in the Future, where NASA formally launches its Mars program, Project Olympus, a standalone initiative dedicated entirely to the Red Planet. Within 30 days, teams would be stood up to prepare the first uncrewed mission targeting the 2026 launch window, with SpaceX's Starship at the center of the plan. The goal isn't a simple flyby. It's a surface landing, delivering the first pieces of infrastructure to Mars, a so-called discovery base, designed to validate the technologies needed for future human missions. That includes major investment in in-situ resource utilization, extracting local resources to produce fuel, oxygen and water, dramatically reducing both risk and cost for sending humans to Mars and bringing them home. To turn Project Olympus into reality, Athena places nuclear electric propulsion at the core of its technology stack. A greatly expanded nuclear electric program 
meant to overcome the limits of traditional chemical propulsion. Inside the nuclear program plan, Isaac Mann lays out the roadmap in three clear phases. Phase one, from 2025 to 2028, is about proving a single point, that America can operate in space using nuclear power. That includes an uncrewed demo spacecraft powered by the Valkyrie reactor from Idaho National Labs, potentially capable of a Mars flyby. Phase two, starting as early as 2026, scales things up to megawatt-class systems with Dow lighter, more durable reactors designed to support crewed missions. This phase also covers crewed docking tests and laser experiments with its potential national defense applications. Phase three is the end game, building a full NEPI fleet that can take astronauts to Mars, keep them there long term, and bring them home safely without relying on magic tricks, like making large amounts of cryogenic fuel on another planet. Even though NEPI is an area led primarily by NASA, the plan is tightly integrated with and strongly complements SpaceX and Starship. The document explicitly describes NEPI as a perfect match for Starship. While Starship excels at heavy lift, reusable landing, and initial transport, NEP provides efficient propulsion for long-duration travel, reducing reliance on chemical engines and improving orbital maneuverability. Together, they form an ideal combo. NASA's advanced nuclear technology, paired with SpaceX's large-scale, fully reusable transport system, allowing the U.S. to accelerate its push to Mars on a far more cost-effective timeline. And with the close relationship between Isaac Mann and Musk, Athena is clearly designed to have NASA work with SpaceX, not compete against it, fully leveraging Starship rather than building a parallel system turning the dream of a Mars settlement into something achievable sooner than ever before. But, of course, everything we've talked about so far is still just part of a draft. To really understand where this is headed, we'll have to wait for Jared Isaacman's final stance on Project Athena. And that leads to one key question. How could SpaceX actually build the first human base on Mars? The answer, quite simply, is Starship. Starship has a 9-meter diameter and stands over 120 meters tall, eventually reaching 140 to 150 meters in the V4 configuration. The spacecraft itself, the part that would travel to Mars, is already more than 50 meters tall and will grow to around 60 meters in V4. At this scale, Starship offers a payload volume larger than the entire International Space Station. Today, it can lift over 100 tons to orbit, and that number could exceed 200 tons once V4 comes online. Even sending just a fraction of that mass to Mars would enable the construction of serious surface infrastructure. Early on, starships would launch carrying massive amounts of materials, modular structures, heavy machinery, and construction equipment delivered directly to the Martian surface. Astronauts would then assemble these modules using the tools brought with them, potentially supported by in situ resource utilization, producing building materials from local resources. This approach mirrors traditional construction on Earth and could result in hardened shelters, insulated domes, or even underground habitats. But Mars is brutally hostile. Dust storms that can engulf the entire planet for months, a thin atmosphere offering almost no protection, Extreme temperature swings from 140 degree at night to occasional highs near 20 degs and intense cosmic radiation. All these forces heavily dictate habitat design. Many engineers and scientists now see Martian lava tubes as the ultimate game changer for early human settlements. These are massive underground tunnels formed billions of years ago when volcanic lava flowed beneath a hardened crust, then drained away, leaving empty caverns behind. Thanks to Mars's lower gravity, only about one-third of Earth's, these tubes can be monstrous in scale. Some are estimated to be hundreds of meters wide and kilometers long, big enough to fit entire cities inside. To take advantage of these natural shelters, SpaceX plans to launch hundreds of starships every two years using optimal Earth-to-Mars transfer windows. Each ship would fly five to six months, landing vertically near surveyed lava tube sites using Raptor engines. Once on the surface, Starship could unload inflatable habitats, ISRU oxygen generators, hydroponic greenhouses, and small nuclear reactors using integrated elevators, similar to NASA's inverted Starship concept. Autonomous rovers would then transport everything to the skylights, natural openings into the lava tubes, 
Cranes, mobile elevators, or temporary ramps would move the cargo deep inside, assembling airtight living spaces with LED lighting, air filtration, and indoor farms to support long-term human survival. The challenge? Some lava tubes are tens or even hundreds of meters underground, requiring complex spiral staircases, elevators, or rail systems to move between levels. This makes daily travel inconvenient, increases risks if systems fail, and could slow emergency evacuations or colony expansion. Though the protection they offer far outweighs surface structures vulnerable to micrometeorites or static discharges from dust storms. In short, lava tubes and modular habitats are impressive, but they're complex and risky. That's why SpaceX is also considering a simpler, more elegant approach. Instead of sending multiple modules and assembling them on Mars, Starship itself could become humanity's first home on the Red Planet. Starship's crew compartment already offers an interior volume larger than the entire International Space Station, more than enough to support long-duration research and daily life for a crew. A purpose-built Starship would leave Earth, land vertically on Mars, and then be laid on its side, instantly becoming the core structure of the base. Once on the surface, the crew would only need to modify the interior, removing or reconfiguring fuel tanks, rearranging systems, and adding structural reinforcements to expand the living space. Life support systems, laboratories, medical areas, and crew quarters could all be pre-integrated on Earth, minimizing the amount of construction required on Mars itself. The thick stainless steel hull would act as a durable outer shell, while the onboard methane oxygen system could support in situ fuel production, ensuring reliable resupply cycles. Additional radiation shielding, such as regolith cover or protective materials, could be added after the vehicle is safely in place. Compared to building a base inside lava tubes, this approach is much faster. A single optimized starship could deliver a near complete habitat with just one or two follow up flights to bring equipment and supplies. Starship becomes both transport and home, spacious, sturdy, and expandable. Its design is already suited for Mars conditions, making it the ideal candidate for humanity's first home off Earth. So, which method do you think is more feasible? Drop your thoughts in the comments below.